a few weeks ago when the weather was still cold, I got outside and pruned a grapevine that we have. Long story behind the grapevine. <laughs> Won't go there, but I have something to show you here. I am not a horticulturist. Uh, most of what I learned in gardening I taught myself by trial and error. I did do some reading one year, stack of books one year about trying to grow things organically. I still haven't put all the cans away from the last video quite yet. But I have, I have watched a lot of videos on YouTube about propagating, rooting grapevine cuttings, and I still don't know if I have it down, <laughs> and, and about uh, how to prune a grapevine. But I did my best at pruning before the warm weather hit, and I have a couple things to show you, and as time progresses, I will try to show you more. But I'm kind of limited right now until I figure out the camera thing. This webcam is what I have to work with and so I try to drag everything in the living room for you to see and I'm trying to get this fine untangled right now. I got home last night after 11 o'clock from a, a trip to the temple and I went in my backyard and tried to untangle four grapevines to give to my friend that took me to the temple. This is what they looked like basically. You're not going to get a real good look at view, but this one you don't have to. It just looks like a stick. This is basically what they looked like when I started to prune. And I wasn't sure if this was a dead piece or a living piece at the time because I didn't take a real close look, but this was a dead piece. This had no life in it. <laughs> and the ones that were living, so I can just toss that one away now. It got tucked in there. I had quite a number of them all. I just took a, I just took a, waste basket and put yay much water with some newspaper in the bottom of it and then put all these twigs into the water to see if they would root. Well they didn't root but they are alive and I will show you the smallest one first. This, let me check with, even with glasses on I don't see any rooting going on here. This is the this is the stem end that I cut off the vine, and this piece is rather small. It's, let's see if I can go the right way here. You can see right in the middle underneath my chin, that is a bud. Let's see if I can show it to you better than that. That's not a very good picture. That's a bud that's breaking. I know the it's a little fuzzy, but there's green there. It's a leaf that's starting to open. So this piece, I am going to let's see if I get it the right way. Now you can kind of see the buds. There's one in the middle and one up between my eyes, right, right between my eyes. There, those buds are breaking now. We had 86 degree temperatures yesterday, so it's warm enough for everything to start opening. Normally, every all the leaf, all the trees are completely leafed out and opened by the 5th of May where we live. Um, but this year here it is the 13th, Friday the 13th, and we are still not completely opened with us. And this is with the budding uh, tree. So this is a larger piece, and way down at the end here, we'll see if I can get this in the right spot. It's backwards. These cameras are backwards, so it's you have to go against your natural inclination of which way to push it. Um, trying to see if I can. There's a bud right here. I can't even tell where my finger is, I'm sorry. It's a bud right here. It's really backwards. There, see by my finger, there's a bud there. There's a bud in the middle. I guess you don't need to see every single one, but it's kind of a long, it's kind of a long piece. There's another couple buds there. More buds more buds all the way down. And those are, it's not a good picture, but you see it kind of looks green right on top of my nose. Those buds are breaking. So what I'm going to do, and I may be foolish, is I'm going to take this end where I cut it off, no roots, and I'm going to put that in the ground about six or eight inches and plant it and see what happens. It will either live or it will not. But there's quite a few buds on this. And the one guy that I saw doing it on, there, that's a good picture. There you can see three buds in a row, one, two, three. 
and four and I can't tell. I'm sorry, I'm a little backwards. Anyways, you get the you get the idea. There's buds all over this. There's buds all over this piece. So it's very much alive. And the one guy that I saw doing uh, propagating grapevines basically just took a green cutting and stuck it right in the ground. Like it wasn't even a stick like this. It was just a green uh, live new part of the vine. With a, it didn't look like it had it wasn't wood like these are these are wood like sticks so it was hard for me to tell um, in the beginning which one of these little sticks were going to have buds and which ones weren't but there was only a couple three or four out of the whole bucket that didn't have buds so I may have just created another 15 grapevines if they work and if somebody knows more about this than I do because obviously I don't know a lot about this I would really appreciate some comments here um, I'm assuming that you can do this with other things besides grapevines, but these have, like I said, these have been in water, in a bucket, in the backyard. I wanted to keep them at, I wanted to keep the bucket and the, the um, cuttings at the outside temperature. If I brought them in the house, I figured that was going to screw everything up because it wasn't, they wouldn't progress naturally the way that they would if they were still on the vine, and I wanted them to do that. There are other ways of propagating vines. There's a guy that does them with two liter pot bottles and leaves them, threads the, th threads the green vine through the pot bottle, leaves it attached to the mother vine. The part that's in the pot bottle with the soil begins to root. Then once it's really well rooted, then he cuts it off the mother vine and plants it. So that's probably would be an ideal way to do it. But I'm a rookie and trying to do things for free, <laughs> trying to be the queen of cheap. And so I'm going to see if these work and give them away and hopefully other families will have grape juice. More on another video, but that's all for this one. Please comment. If you, obviously, I know very little about this. I'm just kind of feeling my way through it. But a lot of what I, a lot of the things I've learned in the last 40 years are just by walking through it and seeing what works. I believe in following the rules, but I... Like I said, I bought hundreds and hundreds of the old Miracle Whip jars, my wide mouth glass jars that they used to put Miracle Whip in. They were made by the Ball Company. And if I took as much care of them as I did my canning jars, I had almost no breakage ever with those jars. They were tough as nails. They were good jars and I still have them and I still would use them and I pressure can them. People say, oh, but you can't pressure can with them. You can pressure can with them. <laughs> I pressure can with them for years and years and years. The, there's no reason you can't pressure can with them. So if you can ever run across some of those and you can get them for 50 cents a dozen or 75 cents a dozen or a dollar a dozen, I would grab them up and just be careful with, you don't want to take them from too cool to too hot and you don't want temperature shock. If you avoid that, they're great. So you didn't need to know that, but I told you anyway, 814, going to quit here. Thanks. God bless your efforts to prepare. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye.